Welcome to Tarantula Collective. My name is Richard, and today we're doing some rehousing. I've got four Dolicatheli diamonds and Nessus with the Brazilian Blue Dwarf Beauties that I need to rehouse into a larger enclosure. Now I have an entire care video on this species that I will link above and at the end of the video. So today we'll just be going over how I'm rehousing them and how I'm setting up their juvenile enclosures. And for their new enclosures, I'm gonna be using the Tarantula Cribs Terrestrial Small Enclosures. If you're interested in getting one of these, I'll leave a link down below in the description. It's tarantulacribs.com. And if you use the code TCollective10 at checkout, not only will you save 10% off your order, but you're gonna help out this channel as well. So let's get to rehousing. Now that I've got the enclosure picked out, the substrate I'll be using in these is the Zoomed Creature Soil. Unfortunately, these only come in one quart bags, but they work great for spiderlings. They hold moisture really well, and they also hold their shape if you're tarantula burrows. It's not really practical to fill a large enclosure with this because they only come in such small bags, but I just picked a few of these bags up at the local chain pet store, and it was only like $1.75 a piece. Now I'm gonna set this enclosure up semi-arboreal. Sometimes I catch a little heat for referring to a tarantula as semi arboreal. So to be clear, this is a terrestrial species. But like the OBT and the GBB and other tarantulas out there, if you give them a little bit of vertical space and some branches or plants to use as web anchors, they will web up the enclosure really well. And they tend to spend most of their time up off the ground slightly hanging out in their web tunnels. Though they do do a little bit of burrowing, so it is important to provide them with enough substrate. Once I got the substrate in there, the first thing I do is I add some sort of hide, usually a little piece of cork bark that's curved. I'll stick that kind of in the corner. Then I'll take a couple of straight pieces of cork bark and kind of lean it up against the side. Or if you have any small fake plants, those would work well also. Now this species does like a little bit more of a moist environment, so be careful what type of wood you decide to put in the enclosure. And a lot of branches you might get from your yard or little sticks and twigs, they're really prone to molding and, and just looking really nasty in a more humid environment. That's why I use cork bark, because because it isn't prone to those mold issues. Now I'm gonna add a little bit of sphagnum moss. Not only does this give it more of a natural look, but the sphagnum moss holds a lot of moisture and really helps keep the humidity up inside the enclosure. And I'm gonna get a few leaves and break it up in there as well, mainly just for appearances. And I almost forgot the water dish. They definitely need a water dish. So I, I got these cool little dishes. They're, they kind of look like rocks. They're water dishes from tarantulacribs.com as well. I'm also gonna add one of these skulls that I got from Houston Frogs. If you're curious about these, just check out my uh, Houston Frogs dart frog enclosure build and unboxing video. I, I show these and talk about them a little bit. All right, one down, let's get on to the next one. Now it's time to get them transferred from their old enclosure into their new enclosure. Now I have a straw that I'll be using to kind of prod them out of their enclosure, but if that doesn't work, I also have these cool little tweezers. Now these were sent to me from Aristu Spider Shop. They're like pressure sensitive. They're, they're really thin, not great for like, you know, holding a mouse or something like that. But if you're moving tarantula eggs or spiderlings or anything, it's just a very thin metal. And when you press on something to hold it, you can press, it will hold it, but it won't smash it. So even if I push it all the way down, it's still holding that nice and safe. They come in really handy, especially when I'm feeding small pinhead roaches or crickets. I can grasp a hold of them and not worry about smashing them. All right, first up, as you can see, they web up their enclosure really well. And hopefully I can just prod it right in there. Yep. 
You gotta be careful with this species because they can be very fast. All right, but first one's in there, no problems. Looks like it's got plenty of room. I think it's gonna enjoy this new home. All right, this one seems to be about the same size. Now I did feed all of these slings a few days ago because I knew I'd be rehousing them. And sometimes the stress of rehousing can make a tarantula not wanna eat for a few days or even a few weeks. So I wanted to make sure they were nice and plump before moving them from their old enclosure into their new enclosure. All right, number three. I feel like I'm never gonna get big on YouTube because my rehousings always go so smoothly. There's no drama, so it's, like it's not exciting. Of course, I'll say that and now jinx myself. Another happy customer. And last but not least, number four. It's just sitting right out there on top. Look at that beauty. This one will be easy. So this may not make for the most exciting content, but it does show that it's very possible to move these dwarf species that are known to be very quick without having any problems. I mean, this rehouse went off with, with no issues. Everybody gently strolled from their old enclosure to their new enclosure. So if you're calm and you're patient and you have everything set up properly, more than likely you're not gonna have any issues rehousing your tarantula. Just make sure you've got a catch cup handy in an emergency, you know, just in case. If you wanna see more of my rehousing videos or just support the channel, watch this playlist right here. As always, I appreciate you watching watching. Subscribe if you want to see more. Support your local bug dealer and I will see you next Tuesday. <laughs>